This is a photograph of two young women taken in India by a European photographer. And this is a pastel by Edgar Dyga of ballet dancers. These works are from different continents and different cultural contexts, but from roughly the same time period, the 1880s and 1890s. Both depict dancers, and viewing them alongside each other invites us to think more deeply about dance and female dancers in this period. Why were they, and many more like them, the subject of these artworks? Who were these performers? Where did they fit in the societies they belonged to? How were they perceived? How did it change? Over 40 years, Dugas was closely connected to the world of dance and the dancers at the Paris Opera Ballet. About two-thirds of his vast body of work depicts opera performers. They were Dugas' signature theme. By the 1880s, he was already known for his depictions of ballet dancers. What interested him was not the opera performed on stage, but rather the offstage, the behind-the-scenes life of the dancers, the conditions and realities of backstage life the training, rehearsing, waiting, stretching, adjusting of costumes, and the interactions between the dancers and the public with backstage access, the quiet moments of exhaustion and sometimes pain. This world he depicted in near-documentary fashion in his paintings, drawings, prints, sculptures, and pastels, such as this work at the Toledo Museum of Art. In a tightly cropped composition, three ballerinas are shown practicing and adjusting their costume. Here, we look at an albumin print from the 1880s attributed to photographer Edward Torrens, who also ran a commercial studio in Bombay. It's set within a studio space, so we know that the photograph is staged. It shows two young women, perhaps notch girls, captured in a dance pose. There's a certain stiffness and formality to the image. Neither of the two women look into the camera. Their attire, the heavy jewelry they're wearing, like the nose ring, the bangles, the gungroos on their feet or the musical anklets on their feet, all indicate that the women are performers. Other reproductions of the image, including cabinet cards, also suggest in their titles that the women pictured here are notch girls. The photograph was taken at a time when the British were rapidly expanding into the Indian subcontinent and were attempting to influence Indian behavior and social practices. This extended to the cultural realm as well, with the British influencing and regulating performing arts traditions. The effects of this were far-reaching, from performers being clubbed into reductive categories to being mislabeled and more. In this period, notch girls frequently appeared in works of British artists. They struck awe amongst some, while others were highly critical of them. Notch is an anglicized form of the Hindu or Urdu word natch, which means dance. The British colonizers invented the term, which described not just dancers, but musicians, singers, performers, writers, and storytellers. The term was both censorious and ignorant of cultural differences, typical of colonial attitudes. A wide range of historical and cultural practices, from the Tawaiyafs of North India to the Devdasi from South India, were reduced to one category. Most dancers at the Paris Opera had working class backgrounds. They often joined the ballet, dreaming of becoming a famous ballerina and, perhaps more importantly, in search of economic and social improvement for themselves and their families. Training began at age 7 or 8, and performance on stage was usually permitted around age 14. Training was rigorous and exhausting, physically demanding and indeed sometimes crippling. There was a small yearly stipend, and bonuses were paid for performances. Only once a dancer became a soloist, however, salaries could become substantial. Most performers barely made a living, nor could they support their families through this income. In ballet, only women danced on stage, while the musicians were all male. The audience was also mostly male, as was the administrative staff and the teachers. Therefore, the ballerinas depended on men for their economic stability and professional success. The paying audience members, so-called subscribers, were also exclusively male. 
For a yearly fee, a subscriber could attend multiple performances a week and receive additional benefits. A subscription also granted backstage access and the opportunity to interact directly with the dancers. Duga himself was a subscriber for a period in the late 1880s. Sponsorship from these subscribers provided another much needed source of income for the dancers. However, it was commonplace for such men to expect sex in return, and thus young ballet dancers were often forced into prostitution by wealthy and powerful men to sustain themselves. By the end of the 19th century, backstage had become a well-known site of prostitution. British colonization deeply affected the women labeled notch girls, their place in society, and how they were perceived. Some British female writers acknowledged the power and independence of notch girls. A number of the wives, for example, possessed financial independence, were well-educated and could inherit property, which was unusual because women in India at the time were not afforded the same opportunities. Prior to British colonization, the wives were regarded as the keepers of cultural knowledge systems. Under colonial occupation and oppression, notch girls were more often viewed with fear and seen as threats to familial stability and Victorian era values. The Notch Girl was cast in the role of a homewrecker in some novels, seducing British men and leading to their ruin. As scholar Jagpal notes, these were cautionary tales where British women were projected as the upholders of morality. For the British colonizers, the term Notch Girls and its subsequent associations helped demonize these women to claim moral and cultural superiority. During the late 19th century, however, Notch Girls saw a decline in their status giving way to an anti-notch movement led by the colonial government, Christian missionaries and Indian social reformers. Dev Dasis were particularly targeted and became associated with prostitution, not unlike the dancers at the Paris Ballet. The eventual passing of the Madras Devdasi Act in 1947 prohibited the dedication of women to temple idols and also allowed them to marry. A number of these reformers, as scholars state, however, aligned themselves with Christian moral values, and while they supported the abolishment of sati and child marriage, they viewed the notch girl as a threat to society. Historically, women have played an important role in the performing arts, yet continue to face challenges and obstacles in the field. Looking at Duga's ballet dancers and the notch girls in tandem, we uncover histories of exploitation and how female performers have had to contend with systems of power from patriarchy to colonialism.